my nerd friends out there, this is Miss Chill here. And let's talk about One Piece, chapter 1058. And this is, <laughs> it was a great chapter to read. It was fun. Not like exciting or, or shocking or like crazy. Nah, it was just a nice, funny chapter. It literally was funny. I laughed a lot in this. And just seeing the reaction and making, like, explaining how Buggy became an emperor. How, um, basically it's funny because both emperors are getting tortured by their own crew. Like you see Luffy basically in a cage and getting mocked by Nami because Luffy basically almost caused everyone to die. Because when the last chapter, when basically was, um, who was a law, a kid, and Luffy were all like, yeah, we need to take no elevator. We're going to go down the waterfall again. We're going to jump off. Like, you know, whoever, whoever goes down the elevator is chicken. And it's like, no one's chicken. And Luffy and everyone went off, basically drove the whole crew, the whole ship off the damn waterfall. And basically, he's getting punished for that. He's basically in the cage, got beat up by his own crew, and he's basically getting tortured by Nami now. And it's funny, he's an emperor. It says Emperor Luffy right here. It's an Emperor Straw Hat Luffy, and he's getting tortured by his own crew. And same thing as Buggy. Buggy is getting tortured by um, Crocodile and Hawkeye. He's getting t tortured by his crew, too. It's like, dude, these are emperors, and they get tortured by their own crew. That's just great. This That's how great these pirate crews are. This uh, One Piece is in my book. It's funny. And the reaction of the bounty sets was pretty cool, too. Uh, Chopper got extra, like, I think $900 increased, 900 So he's a 1,000 bounty, the lowest one. Uh, Yami's at $366 million. Uh, Broke is at $383 million. He got a little increase. It's funny. Freaking Frankie's all pissed off because he just got a picture of the ship. He said, where's my face? <laughs> the last bounty had his face. Now it's just a ship. Um, $394 million his bounty was. And Usa is $500 million. Dude, he's $500 million. Like half a billion? Really? He, he up, this is the, probably the strongest bounty crew out there. Um, Nico is up there too. He's almost, she's almost a billion. She's $930 million, So damn. Um, Usa, I mean, Sanji's all mad because he got uh, $1,032,000, I believe. Yeah, I believe. Or $32 million. Um, and Jinbei and Basie Zoro are almost tied. Except for Sanji, me, um, Zoro got uh, 1 billion, 1 billion, 100 million, and 1,100 $1, dollars. Basie, or whatever you want to call it. And Basie, uh, Jinbei got 1 billion, 100 and million. That's it. So a little bit, basically, 1,100 difference between Zoro and Jinbei. So that's pretty crazy. They're really that neck to neck. Not that much difference. Now obviously, Star Hot Luffy got three billion. But the one that shocked me is like, whoa, why? But obviously explain why he doesn't want to become Emperor. He doesn't care to. Hawkeye's bounty hunter, dude's bounty. He, what, what is his bounty? I think it was over Straw Hats. Everyone, he's the highest bounty of all of them. Um, when he named his bounty, where is it? I want to look that right here. He is worth the world's greatest swordsman. It's worth three hundred, I mean three billion five hundred ninety million dollars. He is worth more than all the pirates, all the bounties, basically. He is worth that much. He's not even the emperor. He's just a, a former warlord, but he's known as the world's greatest swordsman. He's even more stronger than the sword. It says right here too. That shocked me too. But a little bit of Hawkeye is he's followed for former warlord Hawkeye. He has has even greater sword skills than the red hair emperor so he has more buried sword skills and obviously he's world greatest swordsman than hot um um shank and i didn't know shank was that good great with the swords either because we have, obviously we never see shank fought so i don't know how great of a swordsman he is but imagine seeing them two throw that that'd be crazy in the sword fight Whew. but i think hawkeye would probably beat him in the sword fight that's what they're saying right here but it's just so funny seeing crocodile basically buggy ha uh, he was able, well, he's in trouble because with Crocodile and Hawkeye, when he formed this group, Hawkeye and um, Crocodile, when he formed this group, they were gonna be the one control that we want to captain. Uh, Buggy was gonna work under him. Uh, even Buggy said, yeah, because he owed money to a Crocodile. So, yeah, we, we'll, we'll work for you. Don't worry, we'll do all this. But I guess the crew's crew kind of punished him with a way they didn't mean to do it because he loved Buggy so much, his crew, that he base recruited since the uh emperor um below or down below the white beer war that's why i call it that's when he basically got all free all his prisoners and everyone followed him because they saw how powerful he is 
uh, not powerful, they saw he has such a great backstory. He has, uh, he worked on the crew with Gold Rogers. He knows Shanks. He's good friends with Shanks. So his crew loves him so much. He put, when they made the flyers that Hawkeye and Crocodile worked on with them, he, they put him in front of the page and said, yeah, he's the captain. He's the leader. And like, what? Don't do that. He, he's not strong one bit. He does have no power whatsoever against these guys. He's begging for their life. Beg him, please don't kill me, please. Um, and Hawkeye said, yeah, just let him take the credit. Let him take being emperor. He'd be the blame. We could kill him anytime we want. Who cares? We know we're the stronger here. And Crocodile was like, ah, yeah, you're right. Who cares? Let him, let him take the the bullets from the Navy and all that stuff. So that's, that is pretty smart. But you know, Buggy's like, he's toes. He's crying a little bit when he's introducing Hot, Hawkeye and Crocodile, part of their crew. We're all strong together. Basically, it makes sense that Crocodile and Hawkeye joined with them because Crocodile wants to be more stronger. He wouldn't go ask Hawkeye to join forces because they were similar. We don't trust anyone else. We, we, uh, we're we alike. And Hawkeye sees that and says, yeah, so they're going back to hunting down Marines because before that, uh, Hawkeye joined the um, Warlord, the Marines, he was known as a Marine Hunter. So they're going back. That's why they went to go attack the Marines when, they bu when Buggy was getting hunted by the Marines. That was just a coincidence. And Crocodile was there to collect his money and basically Buggy gave him his idea. Hey, take my crew. Uh, we'll work for you. We'll be slaves for you because he has a large number of pirates in the room. That's why he became dead and broke because he has so much mouth to feed. He's like, dude, I have an army behind me. You could be, you basically, you are the emperors of this crew. You guys are the captains. And now I'll just be tanned on the captain because he default Buggy, not them. So, yeah, it works out. Everyone gets what they wanted. They get Crocodile and Hawkeye get a strong crew. A uh, big army crew, because they, they are known as uh, like captains of the crew, too. Like, they're the big three in that squad. Um, so, that works out for them. But they're pretty, the Navy seen that a big old threat. That the big threat right there. But it's funny how they treat Buggy in there. And Buggy's screwed. Um, because one day, he thinks that Hawkeye and Crocodile will kill him. Probably not, but that's funny. Yeah, that was just a funny part. And I guess uh, now we're going back to the Revolution Army right here, because... They all come back. They all um, rescue Kuma. Kuma's back with them, so that's dope. He's probably not 100% there in the head being tortured by the Celestial Dragons and all that stuff, turned to a slave. But I guess they, they, they're happy that Sabu's alive. He's alive, and they're thinking Crocodile still doesn't know for sure. Hey, did he really kill um, Cobra? Uh, I forgot that daughter's... Uh, basically Cobra's a kingdom that um, during the Crocodile uh, arc when he's an emperor, when Luffy took him down, that was his kingdom. Uh, Alabasta, I believe that was his kingdom. Cobra, it was reported a while back that Sabu kidnapped the daughter, Cobra's daughter. I forgot her name. Ugh, it's gonna bug me now. I'm forgetting people's names awfully. There's so many characters to remember. But he kidnapped his daughter and killed her father. But obviously we know Sabu didn't do that. Come on, did Celestial turn things around or someone's getting wrong information? Sabu won't do that. I don't know. But they call him the Flame Emperor now. So he's kind of like the face of the revolution in a way. That's how the Marines are describing him. And, but he's on the other line. That was the end of this story that he's on the line contact, find Croc, uh, not Crocodile, contact uh, Dragon, Luffy's dad, uh, contacting him saying, hey, and we just got that right now. So we don't, he's basically going to tell his whole story, what happened during the whole um, evasion arc when he went to go, uh, the, basically the revolution, went to go attack the Holy Lands to save Kuma and bring back people, what happened, what's going on. So we'll see what happened there. But I think that's the next big arc. I believe that's the next big arc it's when they're going to go war with the revolution. I think Luffy's got to definitely get, I want to see the, con they're probably not a big deal, but we need to see the connection between Luffy and his dad, Dragon. Uh, Luffy's mother, what it looks like, kind of his birth. Uh, why is Dragon part of this Revolution War? We need more details of this Revolution War and more details about these Celestial Dragons, how horrible they are and how terrible they are. So I hope the Revolution, basically the war between the Revolution and the Celestial Dragons, we get that big old arc soon. I think that's what's next. Um, that's, you know, those arcs last for a long time. We got three years left for One Piece, so I think we need that. That's the next one. And then we get the big one. The big one going to the last island. I think that's where the last paragraph, I think those big old stones that Nico Robbins looking for, is at the Holy Lands of the Celestial Dragons. That's where I think the, where they gotta go to find. But that is all for my story. That I mean, that's all for my video. 
give your thoughts on One Piece chapter 1056 and what you think is going to happen, what you think is going to happen next, and uh, what, you, what you like about this chapter. You think Buggy's going to be a great emperor? Um, is uh, what's next for Buggy? What's next for Luffy? What's the next arc going to be? What's next for the Straw Hat Pirates? I can't wait to see more One Piece. A little short chapter, but it was fun to read. But thank you all for watching my video. Please hit the like button, subscribe to, and subscribe to my channel. And I can't wait to talk to you about more manga stuff out there. I just post my One Piece manga and I um, mean my, my Hero Academia manga chapter out there and my Black Clover chapter as well. Go check it out. But thank you all for watching my videos. I'll talk to you all next time. Have a good day and good night. Remember, stay nerdy forever. Bye.